Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to some more Lost in the Pond. It's been, it feels like it's been a good two weeks, a week or two at least since I've reacted to him before. <clears throat> and yeah, this one is Six Ways Living in America has completely changed my life. And we're going to see how this has happened. Um, I guess certain aspects of life he's going to probably talk about how different they are and how they're better. And well, yeah, they're just better compared to the uk or england but we're going to check this out hopefully going to enjoy links are also in the description to my patreon i'm going to do some forrest gump reaction i say some forrest gump reaction a forrest gump film reaction i think i'm going to do it today hopefully i can post it today it takes when i do movie reactions it takes a good flipping i don't know two hours no sorry not two hours two hours to record it which is obvious it's a film reaction 10 12 hours to actually upload them so if i do the reaction today hopefully it'll go up today but it's touch and go when it if like i can actually post it in time but yeah we're gonna links are in the description to that if you're interested in seeing a film reaction to it but we're gonna check this out and see how this is the case hello if you're watching this it can mean only two things one that you the viewer are good at making life decisions <laughs> and two that i lawrence brown have now lived in the united what states the for 15 years wait so it's got it's got bright when he's talking about the, the us but before it's dark is he saying the, the uk's dark he's not wrong to be honest i mean it's 12 o'clock and i'm trying to look out my curtain it's very gray out today but at the same time it is autumn going on winter so it kind of makes sense why but in fact this past weekend marked my move aversary a word that i'm only using because amateur producers told me to i don't even drive but since i left london for america's midwest i've seen a lot of changes and not just in america but you know in myself and the gap logo but mostly myself <laughs> When I think back to who I was in November of 2008, I'm reminded of something that Bill Bryson once said. I can't think of anything that excites a greater sense of childlike wonder than to be in a country where you are ignorant of almost everything. Suddenly, you are five years old again. <laughs> and while my mental age hasn't changed a great deal since then, much about me has. Of course, longtime fans know this already. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. In the meantime, here's a deeply thoughtful analysis of how living in the United States has changed me forever. During the 26 More years that I lived in Britain, I could probably... I mean, I do hear him say about how he's cut out added sugar, cut out fizzy drinks. So, yeah, I mean, if, I don't know why moving here would, to the US would do that. Maybe he came there, really enjoyed the extra portions i guess you could say and then realize oh now i'm gonna actually be conscious of my health and sort of switched it up done a whole 180 or 360 on what he was doing before i don't know maybe as soon as he got there it was different count the number of vegetables that i ate on one hand basically i didn't trust food which was green and orange which for the last time should not be misconstrued as a criticism of oompa loompas now a dislike of vegetables <laughs> is not something associated with british people in general i was just one of those weird kids who in 1986 ate nettles i couldn't look at greens the same way after that until that is, oh, I moved to the United States. And at this point, you're probably thinking, Lawrence, if you couldn't eat healthily in a country known for looking really green, what chance do you have in America where you can top up on pop for free? That's what I'm and thinking. For the first seven years, I didn't really have an answer. Suddenly, I was eating more fast food and Dr. Pepper than ever before. I've just realised that Dr. Pepper is technically a drink. I even gained a lot of pounds, sadly not the <laughs> Wait, British kind. What? And for much of the 2010s, well, I still felt like a human being. It was like... It was like the humans in Wally. -E. All that to say that my diet spiralled completely out of control. I was thinking this, so yeah, when he first came, it probably got a lot worse, and then he was like, yep, now I need to switch it up completely. Oh, unparalleled access to sugar-filled treats and supersized meals was possibly not ideal for somebody with such an addictive personality. But honestly, even now, I don't regret it. <laughs> I think I had to experience rock bottom before I made any kind of attitude adjustment. A bit like John Cena at WrestleMania 29. <laughs> He's always referring to the... You know what? I've got to respect him, man. He loves his WWE or WWF. <laughs> God damn. These days, I don't drink alcohol. I abstain from added sugar and I've long since stopped eating nettles. In other words, America's fully loaded culture became a sort of wake-up call. Either I could surrender to the colourful packaging in aisle three or learn to examine its ingredients. I've sort of ended up doing the second one, but more on that in a later video. In the meantime, I haven't given up on food altogether. In fact... I've expanded my taste buds. Or my tastes. 
not taste buds, or that's the same thing. While I am significantly more conscious about what I eat, there are plenty of American foods that I only devoured after turning 30. At one point, this included pies. In America, especially at this time of year, it's all about desserts like pumpkin, pecan, cherry, and cream pie. Cherry pie sounds good. Please don't Google that last one. <laughs> I've just clocked what he's fucking said. I've also become exposed to the wonderful world of Mexican cuisine, something that was practically non-existent when I lived in the UK. And while Britain has been introduced to fajitas and the like in recent years... Fajitas... Me and my girlfriend have become sick of them because we had them so often. I'd say since we've lived in this apartment, so I've lived here for nearly... It's now approaching three years. I'd say we've genuinely had them in f so in about a thousand days, I'd say. We're probably at like 950 days at the moment, but let's just say a thousand days. I've, we've had fajitas about 100 times. So I'd say, no, I'd say actually 150 times, 1 1.5 times out of 10. So yeah, like we would have them like every week, but then we got a bit sick of them, so we stopped. But then we'd have them every week, sometimes twice a week. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say that'd be more. That'd be like two hundred times. It's been a lot. We love our fajitas. My love of burritos and quesadillas love was cemented burritos, right man. here in America's Midwest. <laughs> Hardly surprising, of course, when every city has a chipotle. But just as prevalent are those local restaurants containing words like casa or hacienda. As a fan of vibrant colours, I am drawn to the interior of these restaurants, which seem to visually mimic all of the. Main Major peppers. My While it's fair to say that my accent remains 96% British, much about the way I employ English has changed since I touched down in Indianapolis. I've talked before about some of the American vocabulary that I've picked up, like trash, mailbox, <coughs> asshole. But it even extends to things like punctuation, because just the other day, I found myself putting the comma inside the quotation mark. This weird phenomenon is found in American style guides but not practiced in Britain where the punctuation comes after the quotes. And if somebody offers me a sandwich after I've already enjoyed a plate of arroz con pollo, I might now say, I already ate, instead of, I've already eaten. Furthermore, I've defaulted to spelling words like empathize, not with an S, but with a Z. A letter that I still pronounce that way unless I'm referring to Gen Z because I learned that phrase in America. Language is weird. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have said this earlier. When I think back to who I was in November of 2008. 2008. Notice how I didn't say 2008? I believe this has been a fairly recent change. And that's the thing about transitioning from British to American English. The change doesn't happen overnight. New Americanisms gradually enter your brain. One minute you sound as English as fish and chips, the next- Those fish and chips look horrifying. <laughs> next you're calling your dog buddy. These days, perhaps a more buddy. fitting metaphor would be English as American style fish and chips. I'm still 75% English, but with some American bells and whistles. And that's all good and well. There's just one problem. I've become too, too comfortable. comfortable. And I know what you're thinking. Ooh, that's good. Lawrence, of course you have. You're a moderately successful huge. Yeah, he's got his own place. Like he's. I think it's fair enough to be comfortable at a certain point. Tuba, all you do is hang out in your hot tub all day. And that just isn't true, because both of my hot tubs have damaged filters. What I'm saying is I've become too comfortable with American convenience. There was By a the way, is this someone else's back garden? That is wild to me. It's literally... See, if I had this back garden, I, I would just like to have my own sort of private area, but that's, I think that's just the difference, right? It's more, I guess people will just talk. Your neighbours, you're just going to talk to them across. Maybe that's sort of why... I mean, I think this is his neighbor's back garden, right? Like here. Yeah, see, that's me, man. I'm getting a fence. I'm, you know, I'm getting it private and all that sort of stuff. But that's just the difference in, I guess, sort of what people are used to. Trouble with American convenience. There was a time in my life when I once did something radical. I used to walk into McDonald's on foot. Now, I just place my order from right here in the car. Although this is my garage and not McDonald's. And it's other stuff too. I've spoken a lot in the last eight years about air conditioning. At first, oh, the I'm white jealous. noise had the unlikely effect of keeping me awake at night. But now, in those scorching Midwestern summers, I can't really live without it. And so, whenever I stay in a British hotel that doesn't have air conditioning, I can't help it. I become entitled. I even once went so far as to complain to the linen closet. It was a good listener. Basically, American convenience has removed from my life tasks that were once so common and unnecessarily arduous. I can't decide if this is a good or a bad thing, so I'll compromise and say it's a very good thing. I know way more about America. Makes sense. Now, this so might do sound I obvious, but it turns reactions. out that moving to another country causes you to learn some stuff about that country. 
Of course, it helps if you happen to be in the niche business of uncovering all of the memos that said countries lost in the pond. But there are some things that you only start to care about once you actually live here. For me, it was the everyday stuff, like figuring out US equivalents of UK shopping brands, some of which looked like they'd come from a parallel universe. You see, America has Lay's instead of Walker's, TJ Maxx instead of TK Maxx, TJ Maxx Max instead of Lynx, Coco <laughs> Crispies what? instead of Coco Pops, Three Musketeers instead of Milky Way, Milky Way instead of Mars Bar, and Dove instead of Galaxy. I've also developed developed a much greater sense of how America is as opposed to how it's presented in TV and film. Because at first I thought there'd be more extraterrestrials and 555 <laughs> phone numbers. But the thing is, America is more invigorating when it's not really trying to be, and I know that because I live in the suburbs. Here I get the same joy walking a dog as I would in England, except because of the grid layout all of the streets look the same, so it's much harder to remember where my house is. This is what makes US suburbs so unexpectedly thrilling. And in hindsight, I only truly felt at home in America once I began embracing the unremarkable. My friend Ian. But also unremarkable things and concepts like the red flags on mailboxes or morning doves or the etymology. What is the red flag for? Is it basically, do you have the flag up if there's mail inside? Is there like a thing for that? Maybe if there's mail inside you have the flag up or if you've opened it, like, is there sort of a theme behind the red flag and the postbox having mail and not having mail? on mailboxes or morning doves or the etymology of the American English word boondoggle. Of course, words are a big part of my job, which brings us on to this. Back when I still lived in the UK, my professional ambitions were not quite what they are today. Partly because the gold play button didn't exist yet. But also because I didn't have the first clue what I wanted to be. Okay, that's not true. I wanted to be an actor. But in the theatre, we're so committed to Shakespeare that some actors get paid in 16th century wages. I was one of- Wait, really? He was trying to be a... An actor or like someone who performs in theatres? That's pretty cool. It's quite a niche thing as well. Them. So I decided I wasn't going to take it anymore. <laughs> Instead, I pursued the obviously lucrative career of YouTuber. And I'll be honest with you, in, in growing my audience, I have been inspired by the American ethos. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. I've just realized that was George McFly. What I'm saying is my success so far owes much to the American tendency to celebrate it. In Britain, if somebody is successful, our collective instinct is often to bring them down a peg or two. Perhaps this is why I'm such True. a deeply modest YouTube sensation. And as a staunch introvert, it might also have been why I wouldn't have succeeded in Britain. Moving to America was almost like starting again. I was emboldened to take my creative exploits to the next level for the very reason that Americans seem to be on board with it. It probably helped too that I had a nice accent. Conclusion. It could be argued that all of this is just another way of saying that I've become more American. Indeed, almost a year ago I did precisely that when I finally became a citizen of the United States. While I might no longer be fresh off the boat, I like to think that I've retained a five-year-old's curiosity. As evidenced by videos such as six British things that are actually American. Continue your binge by watching that video next. Well, there we go. I've actually I've run that reaction already, so... It makes sense, and also, I mean... I feel like if he ever moved back to the UK, he'd probably just hate it because he's now so used to living in the US. It's just one of those things now where he's more at home, way more at home in the US than he would be in the UK. And it's just wild how that probably is because, I mean, I guess when he first moved there, it was, like he said, trying to sort of fit in. It's a lot different and then you get used to it. And now it's like the roles are reversed. You go back to the country of your origins and it's like, yeah, I somewhat don't feel at home here, which is wild to think, but understandable as well. <laughs> congratulations congratulations for being in the US for 15 years yeah it's a long time man um, fellow Brit who moved to Chicago last year it's the best thing I've ever done I feel so lucky I had the chance to leave the UK and come here god damn <laughs> fair enough though I mean you got to respect it I mean for some people it's like getting out of the UK is the dream whether it's to the US or Australia or wherever just getting out of the UK um, which I do understand to be fair I guess when you live somewhere for so long you just want to move if you're just, just not for you or whatever you're not catching a break or whatever it is um, but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments and yeah, until next time like subscribe peace